All right, so we're continuing with the influence lines for trusses. Uh, well, with influence lines, and this one we're going to talk about influence lines for trusses because trusses are so big in, in bridge engineering, and and you have a lot of trusses or a lot of cars or vehicles or or trains or things going across trusses. And really, you know, the process we're going to use the brute force technique, and the process is the same. We're going to have the load move across the various joints, and then. Um, and then calculate the the force in a specific location or in a specific member as that load moves across okay or at, at a specific at, at each time the load is at a location and the one thing with trust is in terms of trust analysis is that we're going to put the concentrated load uh, only at the joints okay only at the joints here and uh, we just kind of go step by step and so you just go through all the locations so here i've got this warren truss um it's got you know it's got this length 20 foot base 60 degree angles if you do some geometry you'll notice that the height of this truss the height of this is 17.32 feet and you just figure that out from just regular trig okay so let me write that in so this is 17.32 feet right here and what we're going to do is we want to find the influence line for this member over here. So this member GF, we want to find that influence line uh, as the load moves across here. So it's going to go from point A, then to point B, then to point C, then to point D. Okay, and so I'll call this position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4. Or I could say in a tabulated format as the moving load goes if i say x is this way x right here okay let actually let me make this three columns right here bam so this would be position one two three and four position number and this would be the x location it would be zero uh, 20 feet 40 feet and then 60 feet at each of these locations that's a zero right here and i want to find each time i want to find the internal force in member gf okay the internal force so and then i just use my basic statics to go through this so basically i got to solve four statics problems all at once i okay but well, well let's do it okay let's do this real fast and so the first case right here the first case is where x equals zero and and really, when my load is right there, my unit load of one, this is a unit load of one, 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 okay? And I just want to note that this one, two, three, four doesn't mean I'm applying the load all at once. I'm just saying these are the different positions I'm going to analyze according to this graph over here, okay? This graph over here. So at x equals zero, I'm at point A. And really, I could isolate this joint using method of joints. So you recall from method of joints, bam, isolate this joint. Or uh, even even better, let's first let's calculate. You know the things that we want to do. And I I know, ah, uh, you know it's so simple. This one is so simple. You should already know what the force is going to be in member GF. And I hope your gut tells you that it should be zero, right? Or the popular online learning term, your intuition, right? Whatever that is, right? It's like my spider sense. Beep, 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 beep. Anyway, that's not that funny. But who cares, right? So here, right here, I got this int this loading at one right here. Bam, right there. And so, you know, I, I want to solve for reactions. So technically what you do for trust analysis is solve for reactions. Solve for reactions. So here, if my unit load is here at point A or at location one right here, and for the globally, I do some of the moments about point D equal to zero, and I go like this right here. And I have a y pointing upwards. I already drew that in. Here's a y. There's going to be an a x, which will always be zero in any position here. And then I have a d y right here. Uh, I would just have here. Um, let's see. I'd have minus a y times sixty feet uh, plus one. The unit force times sixty feet equals zero, and that just tells me a y equals one. Okay, so that's that's pretty easy. And then I isolate joint A to try to find these member forces. And I'm telling you right now, this should be pretty simple. But to isolate joint A, I just have here, bam, like this. I have a loading of one here at joint A. I have a reaction of one here. And then I have my internal forces from my members. This would be uh, NAF, and this would be NAB. And what this would tell me, if this is theta, 
This would tell me when I do sum of the forces in the y, sum of the forces in the vertical equal to zero, I would get NAF cosine, oops, not cosine, NAF sine of theta minus one plus one equals zero. And that just tells me, this obviously goes to zero, it just tells me NAF equals zero. And if NAF equals zero, that means if I do some of the forces, it's NBAB equals zero from some of the forces in the horizontal. And then if I go to joint G, I'm going to get the same stuff. Okay, I'm going to end up with that here, this member GF is also going to have a force of zero. Done, right? Now I, I'm going to go to position two. Okay, so now I go to position two. Bam, position two, X equals 20 feet right here. And at that location, I would have, let's see, I've got this drawing right here at position two right here. So I'm done with this one. Let me get rid of that. At position two, going across, I want to find my reaction at, uh, let's say, AY. Let's find the reaction. So here at position two, I can, I can again take moments about D equal to zero. And this time, again, I'd have minus AY times 60 feet plus one times 40 feet equals zero, and that would tell me AY is four six or two thirds. Okay, that's two thirds, which which makes sense in, in terms of the location. You know, you can imagine, hey, if I have one person standing here holding up the bridge and another person standing here holding up the bridge, and my load is here at two, you know, this person at A is going to have to be a little bit stronger because it's it's closer, right? That's just you know makes sense. All right, well it feels right at least, and our calculations also prove it, so that's good. But here, so now that AY is two-thirds, I got to find member GF. And so you could either go joint by joint, or we can go through and use method of sections. And so one of our methods of sections is to cut through here, knowing AY, AX is zero, knowing AY is two-thirds, is to cut through three members and try to use the method of sections to solve for the force in GF. And so I have here... I'm going to try to redraw this. I have this member here, like this, right here. Uh, I have a, a, like that, and then like that. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay, I have these members, and I've cut through all of these. So here, okay, I've cut through. And I know that my reaction at AY is two-thirds, okay? And I'm looking, I've made the cut, and I'm looking at the left side of my cut, okay, the left side of the structure on that cut. And so here, at this end, I have uh, my force in GF. Over here, I have my force from G to, I believe it was B, GB, NGB. And here is my force NAB, right here, like that. And I know that this angle is 60 degrees. Uh, when I connect these dots over here, this distance is 20 feet. Okay. And I have this two-thirds. And so I want to be able to find the force in NGF directly. And the one equation that's going to help me do that is if I take moments about this point right here, which is point B. And if I take moments about point B, shoot, I'm going to have one equation one unknown. So let's let's make sure that's true. So right here... Bam, this was, we calculated this before, it was just uh, using trig, this was 17.32 feet right here. So if I take moments about point B equal to zero, and I'll do this, bam, right here, I would get minus two-thirds unit force, whatever the force units are, newtons, if you're using newtons, kips, or if you're using kips, or pounds, or whatever, right, times 20 feet, okay, minus two-thirds times 20 feet, minus NGF times 17.32 feet equals zero. And that tells me NGF is equal to, oh goodness, I hope with my calculator I get, um, I get negative 0 